Hello guys, Pahamar here with episode 6 of Let's Mod Reboot. In today's episode, we are going to cover how you can load in configuration files for your mod, um, how you can create them uh, as well, um, so that you can actually use those configurations that a user might uh, tweak in your mod. So, last episode we touched on the idea of reference classes uh, and everything, so just to kind of touch base, um, I've added two more reference constants. So in the last episode we covered mod ID, mod name, and version. Uh, I've since added this client proxy class and server proxy class uh, reference constant, uh, which is just the values we had originally in here. So I've just added that as a constant. So it just kind of cleans up the code a little bit. Now configurations. Once again, this is something that we're going to set up the framework for now. Uh, we don't have any configuration uh, values that we're reading in uh, from a user, the, someone whom they may, um, for uh, example, they may want to enable a recipe through a configuration, or they may want to set the name of something through a configuration, I don't know. The sky is the limit when it comes to a configuration, because a configuration, uh, in when it comes to Minecraft modding, is simply a file uh, that you can specify what different parameters are in it and what the uh, what the defaults are, and then users can actually go in after you've uh, they've loaded up the mod, and they can actually uh, change the values. So this allows you uh, the ability to give your users the chance to tweak how your mod is configured. Hence the name configurations. Minecraft Forge. Uh, offers us a configuration class uh, and we will actually be using that system to load in our configurations. So let's get in because we're going to have a new class and we're going to add in a new uh, package because the configuration um, doesn't kind of fit into any of the existing packages we have here. So I'm going to create a new package called configuration and inside of that I'm going to create a class. I'm going to call it configuration handler because this is the class that's handling our configuration. So I'll leave it like that for now. So we have a class. It's empty. Uh, how do we load in configurations? And I guess a better question is when do we load in the configurations? Configurations are loaded inside of the FML pre initialization event. So they are loaded in pre init. So what do we actually get from this event that we can work with? The FML pre-initialization event actually has uh, a configuration directory and a suggested config name that you can use for your configuration. So if we actually look at uh, the structure for this, so this is the event FML pre-initialization event class, uh, you can see here that we have methods in here that actually say um, Here's the configuration directory for this person's Minecraft instance. This is where you'll want to save files. As well as it even gives you a suggested configuration file name, a uh, file. And where is that defined? So that is defined here. So what you will get back for a suggested config file name, if you're wondering, so you'll get a new file reference, a file object within the configuration directory, and it'll be your mod ID dot uh, CFG config. So for us, it, we would end up, and uh, let me actually, because we've already launched Minecraft once. If we go to Minecraft 1.7, uh, where is this running from? Eclipse config. Okay. So this is the folder in my dev environment where my um, configuration files are loaded from. So if I were to go with the suggested uh, config file, it would put a file inside of this directory, the config directory, called let's mod reboot.cfg. I'll show you that in a second here. So if we were to, let me just reference, okay. So the event has all the details we need. This is the class we know we want to have uh, executed when we want to create these configuration files and load them in. So inside of the configuration handler class, 
we need to add a public static void init method. This method will take in a file reference called config file. And we just need to import the file class. So what this will do uh, is this class configuration handler, um, this method init will take in the file reference that we get from the FML pre-initialization event. So if we were to say this, pre-init, configuration handler init event get suggested configuration file. So what this line here will do is it will take the event, the pre-initialization event, it will pass the suggested configuration file into the init method. And then in here is where we will do everything related to uh, loading in the configuration uh, and creating it and, and whatnot. So we have a file Java object. We don't have an actual file yet. So we actually need to define a uh, configuration. So we will define a configuration called configuration. Oh, and it is a new configuration. So I'm going to import the minecraftforge.common.config.configuration class. If we were to look at it, this class has a ton of stuff in it. And uh, you can see that this, what it essentially is, is, this is an object that takes in the file that will be the configuration file. So the file object becomes the configuration file. And it allows you to load in uh, all kinds of different values. And if it can't find a value, it will actually set a default. So for example, this one here will return us a property from the configuration file. Uh, it will look in a particular category under a particular key. So this would be things like um, player.name would, for example, be a string key. This is a value. And then it offers you the ability to set a comment too. So um, there's all kinds of different ones. So this one will return you a double. There's ones that will return you a string. There's ones that will return you an int or a boolean. So this allows you to pull all kinds of different variables uh, from the configuration file. So you saw that it takes in a file object. So we will pass it the one that's been suggested to us. So now we have a configuration object that has uh, the config file that's been given to us from the FML pre-initialization event. Now we need to attempt to load it and then get whatever values we need from it and then save it when we're done. Uh, we load it first uh, because there could already be things inside of it. Like it may already exist is what I'm getting at here. So first we load it. And I put it inside of a try because uh, there's actually going to be uh, exceptions that could be thrown. Uh, because if it can't find something or if there's any kind of file uh, exceptions, because we're dealing with a Java file, um, a Java file object, not a Java file like a .java. Um, if there's any kind of exception, we're going to want to catch it because we don't want it to crash. So that's what these try statements for. You should be familiar with these if you understand Java. Uh, kind of a bad practice, but I'm just going to catch exception. And I'm going to add a finally. So I'll explain why I've done this. I'll do some comments in here. Log the exception. Read in properties from config file. Load the configuration file. Save the configuration file. Okay. So with that commented out, uh, commented up, I should say, uh, hopefully this will kind of show you the blocks of how this will work. So first we create the configuration object from the given configuration file. Okay, so let's start from the top here. Our mod runs through its pre-initialization stage. It's given an event. We initialize our configuration handler 
and we pass it the suggested configuration file that came along through the pre-initialization event. The very first thing we do here is we create a configuration object from that uh, file. And then inside of a try catch statement here, we first attempt to load the file. And if that's successful, uh, we move on to the next step. And by if that's successful, if there's an exception that's thrown when we're loading the file, it'll run into this catch statement. From here, we would load in properties from the configuration file. Uh, so here we would do things like, so let's do this. Um, Boolean, um, yeah, Boolean config value equals configuration dot get. And here we have all kinds of different options for this. So first you specify the category, then you specify the key that you're looking for. So this would be the value inside of the config file that you're looking to get the value. You specify the default value. So if there's one not found, it'll create an entry for it. And then you can specify a comment. So these are the four parameters that go into this. So Minecraft Forge's configuration actually comes with uh, a, a generic general category. Uh, the value we're going to look for is config value. The default is going to be true. And we'll give it a comment. So you can see here, uh, IntelliJ, I, I just pointed on my screen, you guys can't see that. You can see here uh, in the mouse tooltip, it lists all the different methods uh, that match this configuration.get. And the one that is highlighted is the one that it thinks I'm using, which is the correct one. So this will get me a property that's going to contain a Boolean value. And it's going to get it from the general category. It's going to look for config value. The default value is going to be true. And the comment is going to be, this is an example config value. Now, if I were to put a semicolon here you'll actually, and end the line, you'll see that I get an error. Because if you remember, configuration get returns a property. We actually need to get the value from the property. So we come back to the line here. Let me make this take up the full screen. So after get, we're going to do get boolean. And once again, you can specify the default value here. So this is what is going on. I'm going to load in the value from the configuration file. It's going to be in the category general. The name of the value of the parameter I'm trying to get is called config value. The default value is true. I've specified a, a comment in the file to explain to the user what it's for. And I get the value. And in the event I can't get it, uh, it returns true. If there is an exception at any point dealing with this, it goes into this catch statement. We can log the exception, do other things in here. And then finally, in the finally block of a try catch, this is code that will execute at the end of whatever happens in here. So if I were to successfully get all my parameters from the configuration file, I'll go to finally. If I were to do this and an exception is thrown, it'll still come to finally. So in the no matter what happens, it will save the configuration file. So what happens when we run this? Because let me just check. Yeah, we are initializing it. We are grabbing a value. And you know what? At the end of this, why don't we do system dot out dot print line config value. And to do this properly, then I need to define the variable up here. And I'm going to do that. OK. So this is just a test parameter. Um, later on, we'll get into things like, for example, if your mod has key bindings, this will be a way you want to load in uh, the different key bindings from a user. So we have our test variable here, uh, test parameter, uh, config value. We initialize it to false. We load in the value from the configuration file. If it's not found, it'll set it to true. It'll save the file at the end of it, and it'll output the result. So let's run Minecraft. Hopefully I'm not running too fast on this. This is kind of uh, a basic thing. Uh, so I've done it many times. I have to run through it very quickly. 
If you have questions, please feel free to ask uh, in the comments or on Twitter or whatnot. Hopefully, uh, people are following along that it's basically these four steps of um, create the object, load it, load in the values, save the object at the end. Okay, so we've loaded Minecraft. Let's look at the logs. So where is our statement? Actually, you know what? Let's look at the config directory. So in config, you've probably already, see, already seen it. We have a let's mod reboot config file. We open it up. Let's bring this over here. Here is the general category. And let me do this again so that we can see things side by side. OK. Do this. Here's the general category in the configuration file, which we set here. The name of the property is config value. This right here, this B, indicates that it is a Boolean value. And this is the value. Because this file didn't exist, it created it, and it set the value to the default value we gave it. So there we go. And then uh, hopefully I can find this inside of the, let's look for true. There we go. This entry right here corresponds to the system.out. You know what? Let's do this. Configuration, test. That'll make it easier to see. OK. So we see here uh, it's printed out true, even though we initialized this, value, this variable here to false. So it did properly grab uh, the value from this default value. If I were to come in here and change this to false and save the config file, and then if I were to come back into IntelliJ and rerun Minecraft, and we'll wait for this to catch up. There it is. Ooh, can't quite catch it. Configuration test, so that's this line here again. Because it loaded in the proper value from the configuration file, it found false and it outputted it to the screen. So you can see, this is how we would actually specify our configuration file. This is how we will set the defaults and the categories and whatnot. And this is how we can actually check to make sure that if a user were to change it, that it actually loaded in the correct value. So let me show you something else here. Let me show you how we can actually specify our own categories. Because this just takes in a string, we could say whatever we want. So we could call this category um, ForgeCraft, because why not? Everyone talks about ForgeCraft. Let us rerun Minecraft. So now, and you'll actually notice this here in a second. So Minecraft's loading. If I were to come back here to my notepad++, it says, hey, the config file has changed. Would you like to reload it? Hey, we have this new category. It's called ForgeCraft. And it has a value in it called config value. And its value is true, and it's of type Boolean, which is exactly what we put here. It doesn't recreate the file, because it already exists. Um, so you actually will notice in here it still has the old value, the old thing we had prior to this change. So what if you change this a bunch of times and you got a whole bunch of crud in here? You can actually delete the contents of the file. You can delete the file itself. The next time Minecraft is run, it'll regenerate the file. You'll see that here in a second. There we go. It's recreated the category, it's recreated the value, it's set the default and everything. So this is kind of the intro to configurations. As we get later into the course, we'll actually start uh, having real values inside of here. Um, you can see here, this is just a basic one. The values uh, that you read in from configuration, it's a great place to put them inside of reference classes. Because if you want to say, uh, load in the amount of energy this furnace takes to cook something. You'll actually want to load it in from the configuration and you're going to want to set the value inside of some kind of a reference class. So this is why um, reference classes are a very handy thing. 
Um, here's just one example. A reference class is a great place to store configurations that you load from the uh, player's config directory. Uh, hopefully that gives you all a basic understanding of how to create configuration files uh, and how you can load in values and how you can ensure that they get saved and how you can test uh, if the value is loaded in properly. Um, kind of a, a quick episode I think. Let's check for time actually. That was about 22 minutes so far. Um, hopefully you guys liked this episode. Uh, the next episode we're actually going to get into logging uh, so this is going to be about uh, the idea, and we kind of touched on it in the previous episode, that log helper class I showed you guys. Um, how you can use a class like that in throughout your mod to test the values of things and to leave little notes for yourself inside of the, uh, the log here. Because you can see us doing that system.out just to check what the value that we got from the config file. We were able to find it in here. But if you have a whole bunch of stuff going on, it's really hard to find a line like that. So I'll show you different ways and different strategies for f leaving little notes for yourself inside of the Minecraft log to help you uh, find out why something's not going correctly or just to test something, or if you legitimately want to tell the player something through the log. So this was episode six, touching on configurations. Uh, hope you guys liked it. I fear it was rambly again. Please tell me if it was, if I went too fast, uh, if you'd like me to slow down, if you'd like me to speed up. Uh, if you have any other questions or anything, hit me up in the comments or on Twitter. Or try and find me on IRC. Once again, please try to give me um, stack traces and crash logs. And if at all possible, please point me at your code so I can look at it and tell you uh, what's wrong and maybe suggest some improvements. Um, and we'll see you next time. Take it easy.